Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. Today we're talking INTPs and ISTPs. And if you're an INTP or an ISTP or any other personality type, you might have experienced that there are social expectations in the world and there are social difficulties that are hard to follow. All of us sometimes have to deal with social expectations that have been placed on us that we were not aware of or had no clue existed. Some of us will experience higher amounts of social pressure than others, for example women, and will experience a higher pressure to conform with social norms and social values. There are a degree of contracts floating around invisibly in the world around us, you know, shake hands, talk in a certain manner, follow cultural norms, dress a certain way, take care of yourself in a certain way, look a certain way be a certain person, you know, there's norms everywhere that we have to deal with and understand, you know, where you're an INTP or an ISTP, it's not necessarily that you have difficulties with social norms, uh, it's not necessarily that it's difficult to conform or to deal with or accept the issues that are social in their nature, but it's rather that it's boring and it feels tedious and it feels to some extent, meaningless. Why am I supposed to do this? Why am I supposed to act this way? Why do I have to dress this way? Why do I have to put time on this? It can feel that there is a degree of stress and anxiety associated with uh, dealing with feelings and with other people's feelings. You can be stressed or afraid of saying something that will hurt other people. You might feel a strong degree of stress keeping you from speaking out or sharing your mind with other people. There can be an idea that uh, other people will consider you offensive or that other people are looking down on you or that other people are judging you. It can be hard as an INTP or ISTP to deal with or reflect on other people's views and opinions and expectations on you. Did I do something wrong? Should I have done something that I didn't do? Was there some kind of contract that I missed to follow or go along with? As an INTP, it's easier to revert to some kind of cost-benefit analysis before you're doing something. You want a rational explanation for why you're doing something. And you want to have explained to you by other people the social norms that you have to participate in and the social protocols and contracts that exist around you. Ideally, it's easier if other people can just tell you what they are feeling and what they expect from you so that you can choose to deal with it appropriately. But a lot of the time other people refrain from doing so. And the question is then, should I participate in social expectations or should I worry about social expectations that other people have refrained from telling or sharing with me? Do people have a right to be upset if I refuse to shake their hand or because I chose to dress differently than everyone else? Should people judge me based on my clothing choices or based on how I do my hair or what colors I choose or how I express myself? With INTPs, uh, what you see is often uh, that introverted thinking is all about rationalizing everything that's happening around you. And to an an extent, all kinds of emotions and experiences that are social in their nature are and appear completely irrational. Everything we do on a group or a social or cultural level can appear redundant or unnecessary. All the actions we take, everything we happen to say, or all the niceties we fall back on, you know, how is your day, and can I ask you a question, and uh, so I was wondering, you know, all those words can appear unnecessary. Like, why are you saying that? Why are you not just asking me a question? Why are you saying this phrase? It makes no sense. It takes time to pronounce. It takes energy. It takes effort. So the INTP can struggle with a lot of this and appear to be a little too precise. You know, the precision of the INTP type, you know, getting right on to the question of the heart of the matter, you know, What are we doing today? Where are we going? Why is this happening? It can appear short. It can appear too too direct. And it can appear like you're not interested, that you're not caring, that you're not empathetic, that you don't like other people. 
So the thing INTPs and ISTPs have to deal with is this idea that constantly people do not like you for what you're doing. Constantly people are feeling judged or disliked by you. Constantly people act towards you as if you are or an enemy or somebody that is against them for no reason. And uh, here it is, other people expect you to be upset with them. Other people think you are upset with them because you refuse to do this or that, or because you refuse to go along with said social norm or social expectation. At the same time, you get a lot of INTPs and ISTPs that are in the grip of the inferior function and are slavishly conforming to the group out of fear of social retribution. INTPs can in fact muster a strong amount of extorted feeling when they fear social retribution, when they are anxious that maybe if I don't do this, other people will be upset with me. Maybe if I don't go along with this, other people will think I dislike them. So the INTP or ISTP can, due to their principles and uh, due to being too selfish in the past come to overcompensate for their intelligence and for their critical thinking. You know, you can feel that while you master and show high introverted thinking and high critical thinking, while you can pierce and see the problem with any work anybody has done, with any project that anybody is working on, with any solution that anybody is offering, you have to be nice constantly. You have to smatheringly be nice to other people. You have to ask people questions and you have to force yourself to deal with other people. And to some extent, this is healthy and natural. There is a range of extroverted feeling that INTPs need to have and to access to feel good about themselves. Extroverted feeling is a need in the INTP, just as introverted thinking is. But introverted thinking is a lot bigger and a lot more predominant in the INTP. So it's worse to be starved of your need for introverted thinking than to be starved for your need for extroverted feeling. It's worse to shut down yourself and to not express the frustrations you might have with the system or with how things are done in your workplace or with issues and flaws you keep seeing that keep coming up. You know, the introverted thinking type is not a deeply emotional person. But an introverted thinking type can become quickly agitated and frustrated when the problems keep occurring over and over. You know, introverted thinking types, they want to have like a, this clean environment where problems are solved and dealt with, where issues come up but are resolved as soon as possible. And when there are rational processes and steps and methods that you can take to deal with problems when they come up. But emotional issues that keep coming up or conflicts that keep on happening, happening that do not meet the resolution that you have to constantly deal with through extroverted feeling, those are highly draining. So there are two different scenarios you don't want to deal with as an INTP. And that's first when you don't get your need for social approval, when you don't get your smaller need for extroverted feeling and for feeling a part of the group met. First, you can start worrying excessively about social retribution. The less, if you're not meeting your extroverted feeling dose that you need, if you don't get people smiling at you at least a little bit or showing some appreciation or saying thank you or uh, making you feel a part of the group, of course, you're going to feel very isolated and you're going to feel like people are going to shut down on you soon. Soon people are going to start hammering down on you if you... Uh, people really dislike you, you're not, you're not fitting in anywhere, nothing is good, you know. That's, that's when extroverted feeling is not met, met or not fed enough. The other issue is when social pressures become more overwhelming than what you want them to be. The people around you that exist in your groups and in your circles and at work start feeling like a pressure and a, and something that's tying you down. You're constantly forced to spend time taking care of other people's emotions and you're getting up, upset because it's too much pressure on your shoulders. So extorted feeling is the baby function, the three-year-old of the INTP's arsenal. 
And that means the inferior function is easily overstimulated socially. That means uh, it can deal with and it can enjoy extorted feeling to an extent, but it has to be aware of what extent that is. You know, when are these things starting to get too much? And that's when you need to start reining in and saying no. Uh, sorry, I can't be there. No, I can't help you with this. I'm currently focused on this problem that my introverted thinking tells me is very much, much more important. Or, yeah, of course, I'll help you, but I'll have to do it at a later time because I've already been uh, helping that person all day or I've already had to deal with this all the time now. So just being able to set healthy boundaries for your extroverted feeling, you know, let people know how much you can reasonably give and let people know that, yeah, it's sometimes it is difficult for me to show social courtesy, but I'll try my best to show some care and consideration to you. And I will uh, try my best to look at you, but let me know, you know, if something is wrong or if you're, something is going wrong, let me know. Because I can't always fuss or worry about it or think about it. It's too much for me and it starts draining me and starts making me feel low on energy. You know, the inferior function, it can upset your natural flow as an INTP. And a lot of the time, it's better to pull on intuition to mitigate and balance out your personality than to use extorted feeling. A lot of the time, your intuition and your thinking is enough. And that's something you have to recognize. You know, just as who you are, that's enough. You don't have to change yourself. You don't have to... Uh, switch around and do a 180 and suddenly become everyone's friend. You don't need to do that. You know, there's a healthy amount that you can expect of yourself. And that's the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is 80% of the time, be yourself, do what you love, have fun and be the person you are, you know. And 20% of the time, recognize if you're starting to behave like a dick or an asshole, you know, recognize when you need to slow down and give other people a chance to catch up and recognize when yeah you're starting to become overly critical of others or when you're bringing up too many problems at once or where you need to match people's tempo. Introverted intuition which is an important part of an INTP's arsenal but an often forgotten one can provide wisdom that you need to develop a degree of non-interference or caution around other people. You can see how things are at their best, but you can also start to understand how much you can reasonably expect. You can have personally strong views for your own personal life about the principles you want to live by and efficiency you want and ask for. But you can also develop a tolerance and an understanding that other people are different. Other people can act on a higher level of extroverted feeling and can follow a higher degree of social protocol. And that can be okay and that can be all fine and good for them. But it might not be good enough for you. You know, the MBTI can teach you to understand other people's situation and where other people are coming from. Just as it can teach you your own situation and where you are coming from. So what you want to fall towards it's towards a base understanding of self and of other people and how they are and how you are. It comes down to recognizing other people's strengths and recognizing the value of social protocol from a social level. Okay, social protocols will only tendentially have value on a rational level. Only sometimes will a social ritual that we all partake in have a rational background or have uh, intelligent reasons behind it. Sometimes it will only purely have emotional reason. And those emotional reasons you might understand in yourself as well. I mean, you're not a robot. You're, you have feelings and you have an experience and need people to feel happy. You know, you cannot completely isolate yourself or shut down other people from your life. You do need them to some extent. You can try to go on a hiatus for a while, but you'll find yourself naturally drifting back to wanting at least a thank you sometimes or a smile on the street from somebody or somebody that will pat your back and show some intimacy towards you or some respect or some appreciation. You, will, all, Everyone needs that. All human beings are social. And that's the value of social protocol. It's just making you feel happy and making you feel appreciated by your tribe, your workplace, by your friends and family members. It's all about respect and it's all about love. And it's all about that emotional transaction in which a group 
can raise the mood and the spirit of everyone else in it you know as soon as you step into a group if it is a happy group you will feel your emotions racing personally you will start just feeling better personally you'll start performing better you'll start doing better at what you do step into a group that is toxic where everyone is upset with each other and where there are no strong social norms where people are rude to each other and uh, abusive and toxic what you start seeing is your own emotions will quickly shrink you'll start feeling worse you'll start feeling easily agitated and you will start struggling as well so as an INTP or ISTP, social norms and social expectations are important to consider. You cannot forget about them, but you have to develop a base level of respect of self. And the more often you can do this, and I, this is my final advice to you, the more often you can develop and use introverted thinking in social situations for, to provide social value, the better. If you can use the rational principles you have and the critical thinking you have to make other people feel appreciated and welcome and uh, ex uh, and like they matter, you're gonna become better, you're gonna keep maintaining your flow, your INTP flow, and you're gonna keep happy and you're gonna mitigate stress and you're gonna start feeling better. Ideally what that means is be precise, be accurate, offer critical feedback and analysis that will make other people feel appreciated and loved by you, you know. Find a way to offer critical feedback that will make other people feel understood and heard. What that means is share when people are making a mistake or show people what they are doing wrong and remind them that you do this because you like them and because you want to see them succeed. You would not investigate you would not invest the time and energy in them. You would not say this if you didn't think they were good people, that were smart and intelligent. You say this because you like them and because you want to help them. Remind them about that every time you're engaging with them using introverted thinking. Let them know and make sure they appreciate and understand where you are coming from and who you are. So this is my video on INTP social feedback and dealing with social expectations. If you like this, leave your comment down below. Let me know how you as an INTP are dealing with social feedback. And if you want any further help, send me a message to patreon.com slash Eric Leave a donation and let me know what you're going through and what you're doing. And hopefully I can help you in some way or some form. So thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.